Uh, name Julius W. Beckton Jr. Graduated 1944. I joined the Army December 1943. The Army Air Corps listed reserves. I joined the there were six of us who raised our hands on the 28th of December. We wanted to become pilots, and we were wanted to become pilots because one of our former graduates, Hep Arnold, visited Laura Marion, gave us a long song and dance about joining the Army Air Corps. General Arnold came to Laura Marion, the founder of the Air Force, and gave a powerful speech, and Julius and two or three of his fellow football players went off, lied about their age, and enlisted. The motto that was over the old Lower Marion School Building, I think it's still there. It said, enter to learn, go forth to serve. You couldn't help when you leave, live Lower Marion. There was a big patriotic feeling there during the war. You knew a lot of guys that had gone off who were older than you were who didn't come back. And uh, I don't know, but I mean, that sort of influenced my life a lot. I would say Lower Marion was a really great athletic environment. I played tennis, I played basketball, I played lacrosse, uh, and I, once I got to high school, I solely played basketball. But it was just the exposure to a variety of different sports. A lot of the student body was involved in athletics, and I really think that shaped my experience in high school. Here you are with a group of people. You haven't chosen your teammates, um, and yet you have to come together and find the common ground. I'm an engineer, and engineers love props. So what I've done here is decided to make a timeline of things that were important to me while living my life. Some of the activities were centered around things like going to rock and roll shows, which uh, I was uh, really into it in the 60s, all the oldies, which they call now the oldies but goodies. It was kind of nice to sit in your car and listen to rock and roll and see the, the stars singing. Let's see, I was at Lower Marion from uh, 66 till 69. I learned how to sail when I was 16 years old during the summer. And when I got back to school, I asked the school if I could start a sailing club, and they said absolutely. And a lot of these people are still sailing today. I'm still sailing and still teaching. We had a dress code in the school. We didn't have a uniform, but we had a dress code. The girl, pardon me, the girls had to wear um, either skirts or dresses, uh, no sneakers. The guys had to wear slacks, no blue jeans, no jeans of any kind, and a collared shirt, no t-shirts. Some of us pushed the limits of it. The summer of, the summer of 68, was the summer of love out in Haight Ashbury and it spread throughout the world. My parents went over to Carnaby Street and brought back some um, mini skirts for me. Well, you weren't allowed to wear your skirt any, any shorter than the center of your knee. And if the teacher thought that your skirt was too short, she'd send you to the nurse's office. You had to get down on your knees and if the skirt didn't touch the floor, they sent you home. So I was sent home quite a number of times for wearing these mini skirts. So in protest, a bunch of us got together and we decided to wear granny, glass, uh, granny dresses that were all the way down to the floor. It was scary. It was very frightening. I, these kids didn't know if they were going to get drafted. They didn't know if they were going to get killed. We didn't know, you know, they tell you, look to your left, look to your right. The person sitting next to you isn't going to be here 10 years from now. They always tell you that, you know, the first day of whatever, high school, college. And we, we heard it in high school. Up here, I'm a specialist in sea shanties, the work songs of the sea that the, the men sang on the tall ships. Stacey schooner rig, she's swiftly underway. Pride of the Annapolis and with her no crew. Quickly passing all the boats and new. She is the wood wind. Here one day, and they just stood there and looked at us. Like, what are you doing in our yard? So I'm Hallie Faust. I graduated Lower Marion in 1969, 
and uh, now living in Santa Fe, New Mexico, full time. I do work at the hospital as a clinical ethics consultant. I started my career teaching at the University of Michigan in the School of Public Health and the Medical Schools after my residency. And um, part of what I started doing was modeling what costs of health care were preventable. If you look at our class, I think a third are doctors, a third are lawyers, a, th uh, a third are accountants. Um, you know, I was one of the early kids to have like long hair and wear jeans and my shirt was untucked and I probably smelled like patchouli and I had two older brothers that were like smart, quirky, hippie guys. So, you know, I was always carrying around, you know, copies of like Kafka or the Communist Manifesto, basically just to piss people off. Um, I was one of those kids who every morning when he got up to salute the flag, I wouldn't do it, you know, which... <sighs> what's wrong with that kid but you know those were the days it was vietnam it was watergate there was a park across the street in our house and i'm in my last year at the alternative school and it's probably march or april and it dawns on me that i may not have enough credits to graduate because i was a screw up and i probably wasn't taking everything i should have and i might have even failed a few things you know i think i took algebra one three times um so the alternative school was an open school. It was open. It was just like open classrooms. It was all about openness. It was about transparency. It was about removing hierarchical boundaries, including locks on file cabinets. So I found myself in the office of the alternative school removing the file with the tab Michael Colomeco. It was all of my original class records going back to Marion when I started. So that was when they had me third grader, second grader, fourth grade at Marion Elementary. All the originals, I had them. And I took them, I took them home. And I got a uh, call, I had them home for a couple of days. And I got a call from the alternative school saying, Mike, you know, yeah, hi, you know, you know, I'm cutting school that day. This is principal so-and-so, uh-huh. We're looking for your records. And I said, oh, well I have them. What are you doing with them? You know, I just wanted to sort of look at them, see what kind of comments, you know, those little things you could never see the teachers would have written. Well, the truth was I had changed a few things. Um, a few credits that were one became four, a few passes that were pass-fail became B. Um, somewhere along the line of me having those files at home, I got enough credits to make sure I was going to graduate that year, which is an awful thing to admit to. But I stole my high school records and doctored them two months prior to graduation so that I could graduate. There's a little Marine story. I ended up with a uniform that didn't say Lower Marion on it, it said Lower Maroin. There was one, one uniform that came back with the letters wrong, M-E-R-O-I-N. And I figured that was the sort of the stigma of my, base, my non-existent baseball career. If more people get more access to more knowledge and have some kind of driving feeling that they're put on this planet to make some use, creative use of it. Whatever the problems of today, tomorrow can always be a little bit better than yesterday. I'd always thought of myself sort of as a math and science nerd, probably still do, actually. And uh, English class was just sort of something that I had to go through, and I just had to do whatever I was told, uh, you know, because I had to take it. And in uh, Mrs. Mastriano's class, uh, you know, Mrs. Mastriano forced us to uh, uh, do a lot of creative writing. Mrs. Mastriano asked us to write a monologue. I remember it was God, uh, but not wearing pants, and uh, sort of talking about uh, that whole, uh, what him not wearing pants meant, and uh, what God's observation on the world was. And so that was the monologue I wrote, and uh, Mrs. Mastriano I uh, took it and um, I remember I got a C and so I took the same monologue and I was like oh do you want to submit this also to the Young Philadelphia Playwrights Festival? I'm like sure why not and um, my uh, monologue was accepted it was actually the closing monologue of the show and so <laughs> Miss Mastriano upon learning about this um, told me that oh uh, now that you know I'm going to revisit your monologue, and uh, she bumped my grade up to a B. If you had asked me back then, I would have thought I'd be working in a lab or an accounting firm. And I think that's completely attributable to the appreciation 
sort of you get for the um, arts and the sort of artistic process that um, that uh, my English class with Miss Mastriano gave me. My name is Lori Harrison. I graduated in 1975. The day-to-day -day life at the San Francisco Opera can be extremely chaotic. This week, next week, I run the prop department. This is what we call our armory. I learned how to use tools. I learned how to deal with people. I learned how to organize. All of that stuff makes you actually accomplish something. You, you, the curtain goes up. Um, the yearbook comes out. The newspaper gets published. The sporting event happens, and it happens because of us. It's some 40 years later or whatever, and uh, I still do the same thing I did in high school.